chapter five is about short workplace messages and digital media. If we were in class, which we are in this video, you should raise your hand right now and keep your hand raised if you belong to at least one social media site. Keep your hand raised if you belong to two social media sites. Keep your hand raised if you belong to three social media sites. Keep your hand raised if you belong to four or more social media sites. Take a moment to reflect on the above activity. What have you learned about your social media presence? So in this chapter, we're going to touch on social media and emails and workplace messages. The first section is called Communicating in the Digital Age with Emails and Memos. The distinction between online and offline is really becoming blurry as our virtual and real life connections start to intertwine. As we engage socially almost all the time, our reliance on our phones and other electronic devices keeps growing. Social media has really changed how we communicate from one-on-one -on -one online conversations to one-to-many transmissions. You can create, edit, cons consume content, review products, share information, as well as media. So many things that you can do with technology. One term I want to discuss is a cloud, and it's the storing and accessing of data along with software applications in remote networks. A lot of you have probably used the cloud. Virtual private network secures access to an organization's information from any location in the world that provides an internet connection. And as you know, you're taking an online class right now that you can pretty much do everything through technology but it can be challenging because there are barriers when you're not face to face all right email is going strong uh, i think email well it says email traffic grow traffic grows four percent a year worldwide office workers receive an average of 120 messages a day think about how many messages you get and re send and receive a day emails are exchanged daily the CEO of Slack Technologies, his name is Stuart Butterfield, and he said, I could see email lasting tens of thousands of years, as preposterous as that sounds. If email is ever killed, it can be replaced with something that has all its virtues and its problems as well. It's an open system that anyone can participate in and has a global namespace. It is a protocol that's decades old and has thousands of clients that support it. Business journalist Susie Welch is emphatic that sloppiness and mistakes are not an option. You may like to write, this is what she said, you may like to write off the cuff train of thought messages because it's fast and easy, she says, but no one wants to receive them, okay? No one. So it's important that you write them accurately and emails can eliminate the distinction between work life and home life, causing employees working remotely, feeling an urgency to be available 24-7 and respond immediately. This is definitely me. I am one of those people that just can't stop working. And it's really hard when you work remotely to separate family from work. So I can definitely relate to that. 
Organizations can legally monitor staff's email accounts if the workers access them on the company's computer network, so be aware of that. Employees who set up their email on your smartphones, you're given the right to remotely delete all personal data on that mobile device. You're given that, to, that right to your employer. Estimates that suggest almost 30% of bosses have fired an employee for email or internet related misuse. So be aware of what you're sending and what you're receiving and always be professional. Short informal messages, you mostly send them by a text or a chat. But email is more appropriate for longer, more involved, well-organized messages for somebody that may be requesting information or maybe you're responding to inquiries. Messages must be saved, archived, and a cover document when sending longer attachments. One expert advises delivering messages in person when, when they require a human moment. That is, those that are emotional require negotiation and relate to personnel. And it says that researchers have found that people are 34 times more likely to comply with the in-person request than those sent by email. Well, that's very important to remember. A, a lot of times personal touch is, is very is essential. And it says the scholars also established that most office workers estimate the pers overestimate the persuasiveness of email. So if you're trying to persuade, you don't want to do use email. You probably want to meet face to face. All right, professional emails. I know we have students in the class that really wanted to learn how to compose a professional email. You want a compelling subject line, and you want it written in a combination of uppercase and lowercase letters. We're going to look at a model document in just a second. You want an appropriate greeting or salutation. You want the body to be well organized, and you want it to be easy to read, and you want a positive tone. And then in the closing, you want to complete it with the action statement, name, and contact information. So model document 5.1 shows you what not to do. You don't want to use a meaningless subject line problems. That sounds really negative. You want this to be positive. And then it does not really say why you're emailing them. You're supposed to be very straightforward as far as what the email is about. And it says this buries two problems and three part solution in a huge paragraph. And you want it to be easy to read and this is not. And then they didn't even conclude with the next action and an end date. So here's how you should compose this email. Subject line is positive. Then it comes out and says its purpose is to recommendations for improving customer database. So, and it also tells, it tells the purpose and then it highlights two problems. Then here are your steps organized in numbered lists. And then close with the key benefit, a deadline and a next action. So read over this and use this as a guide when you are composing an information email. Down here, I love the tips for formatting email messages. These are great. This is such a good go-to for when you're trying to compose a business email. This is important to keep your inbox in check. Make sure you check your email and set times and it says not to two or three times a day but i definitely don't follow that because my emails come straight to my phone and i'd rather just go ahead and respond if i can turn off audio and video alerts to avoid distraction agree on a schedule with your boss and share it with your colleagues 
Apply the two-minute rule by answering short emails immediately and scheduling time to answer complex emails later. I do this. When I get a message and I don't have everything in front of me to respond, I do wait, especially if it's more complex and I need a little more time to think about my response. A blogger and a podcaster, Merlin Mann, suggests that your job is not to read email and then read it again. Instead, he recommends taking one of five steps right away. This is pretty interesting. Delete, delegate, respond, defer, or do. I really like that quote. When you're applying efficiently, you can do what's called down editing, and this involves inserting your response to parts of the incoming message to which you are responding. So to use down editing effectively, you want to delete the sender's message header, signature, and unnecessary parts, and then include only the parts of the incoming message to which you are responding, Identify your response with your initials if more than one person will be seeing the response and use a different font color for your down edits. I do this a lot, especially when I am emailing colleagues, I will down edit. And then enter office memos. These are used for internal messages. If it's too long for an email, you can do a writing, you can write an inner office memo or if you need a permanent record, if it needs to be formal, if you need to inform employees who do not have work email, such as uh, employees that are in manufacturing or construction. And the memo format is particularly necessary for complex, lengthy internal messages. Prepared as memos, long messages are then delivered as attachments to email cover messages. So, Memos really function better for permanent records, and so this is when you would want to use an inner office memo. Memos have much in common with emails. They both carry non-sensitive information. They can be organized directly with the main idea first. Have guide words. Remember, we've been talking about uh, guide words, calling for a subject line, a date line, and the identification of the sender and receiver. You need to organize it with headings, bullet list. You can number, and then clo always close with action information, dates or deadlines, a summary of the message, and a closing thought. Sometimes we get so busy and we forget how important the close is. Mem memos need not close with goodwill statements such as those found in emails. So some closing thoughts is often necessary to avoid sounding abrupt. So let's look at a model document. 5-2 so take a look at this document and get familiar with the format and use the tips for formatting memos and let me know if you have any questions.